Hello guys and welcome to StarCraft where I take you to the missions and how to get the achievements. Today's mission is Phantoms of the Bo Void and it's in the Heart of the Swarm campaign and the achievements are Phantoms of the Void. Complete the mission. Stukov strikes back. Don't let Stukov die. The Phantoms menaced. Kill two hybrids within 20 seconds of each other on normal. This mission's actually pretty simple. It's a lot similar to the Media Blitz mission in the Wings of Liberty campaign. Instead of using a Thor to basically be the unit that has to stand on the towers, you're using Stukov himself. And basically, he's a, he's a pretty good commander. He's got a bunch of abilities that are very useful. And basically what you'll do is... After you, after you have Kerrigan engage Narud in their DBZ Kamehameha wave fight, <laughs> and I'm not even joking, they do a Kamehameha wave above your head this entire mission. <laughs> but after you have them to engage, Stukov basically takes over command of this mission, and you have to move him from basically, they call them shrines, so you have to move him from shrine to shrine, defend it until you cap the shrine, and then move on to the next shrine. And each shrine you cap basically weakens Narud. So this way Kerrigan can actually take him out. Now on this mission, uh, you do want to basically work on your upgrades pretty quickly because your primary units are going to be Queens and the Ultralisks. And basically they are pretty powerful uh, synergy together. The Ultralisks are basically the siege tank of well they're the siege units of the zerg they're equivalent usually to about a thor except for the fact they have no air cape anti-air capability that's where your hybrids come in also the reason thing that makes the ultralisks so good is the fact that the ultralisks have what or the yeah the ultralisks the hydra yeah, sorry the Swarm Queens have the healing ability, which basically extends the Ultralisk's lives. And they already have a well deep life pool as it is. And as you can see, Stukov has the ability to summon infested Terrans right there, so that makes him pretty useful in this. Or infested Marines, I should say. Infested Terrans would just kind of wander up and get smacked down, but infested t marines can actually shoot things that get too close, so that's what makes the marines better than the Terrans. Also, you'll want to take this expansion down here pretty early, so make sure you keep an eye on that. For the most part, you'll be dealing with Protoss in this mission, so you shouldn't have too much of a worry with your composition as long as you stick with basically Ultralisks and your swarm, either your swarm queens or hydralisks. I'd suggest going with swarm queens because they can deal as much damage as your hydralisks, plus they can heal your ultralisks. So now here comes one of the hybrids right now. Now be aware that the hybrids do have an AOE that they do initially right off the bat when they're engaged in combat. So. Basically, after you take that first shrine, go ahead and move down and clear out this excavation or expansion point. Yeah, I didn't think about it when I first sent my drone down there, but of course they're going to have defenses down there. <laughs> Yeah, the other reason you want to take this expansion pretty early is because the Ultralisk is a very expensive unit, coming in at, I believe, 200 minerals and around 300 Vespian gas. Or it might be 300 minerals and 200 Vespian. But he's still very expensive, which is a 500 mineral investment versus most of your units, which is usually around about 150 to 200 investment. 
and the hydro or the swarm queens behind them usually run, run about 100 to 150 minerals and then 50 vespian gas so as you can see there's their kamehameha battle going over your head and it does keep track of it at the top of your screen here so you can see you do have a little bit of leeway because that bar doesn't move that fast so you do have a little bit of build up time you can kind of you can kind of wait but don't wait too long is what i'm trying to say Yeah, as usual, you'll probably want to put your rally point on Stukov instead of Ke well, you'd usually put it on Kerrigan, but as you don't have Kerrigan with you this time, you'd put it on Stukov. So this way, your troops will all group up in one spot. Unless you're good at macro and you can kind of spread them out. But I'm not good at macro, so <laughs> or micro, sorry, macro, micro. Same thing, right? Shh. <laughs> yeah, I'd wait until they do this assault right here, and then after they do the assault, go ahead and move on to your next shrine to destroy. Like most holding missions, you'll wait for the attack, and then you'll move out to do the assault on the lock, or shrine in this case. Try to have your Ultralisks out in front of your other units, because they're you want them tanking the damage. Everything else you want to basically be behind the Ultralisks, or if you have Zerglings, you don't want them engaging first. Because they don't have a lot of life, but they do do a lot of damage, so... As you can see, Stukov has a few abilities. He has the Summon Marine, the Infested Marines, then he has a, a healing ability, and he has the ability to do massive damage to one unit. So basically, that's your hybrid killer right there. You basically wait until the hybrids show up to use that ability, and then draw the hybrids in close to Stukov and zap one. just like that. It doesn't do a lot of damage, but it does help, so. And it doesn't take long to cap these shrines, so. That's a good part. Now if you want, I'd set up a defense at home, this way you don't have to pull your force back to the base, because like earlier, they will keep attacking your base, so you will need to set up defenses at the base, like I'm doing here. And you'll need to set that up at each base, because they will go for both bases. pushing to the next shrine. And there's one of the Kerrigan levels if you want it. Again, they're not, the reason I don't usually go for stuff like Kerrigan levels or Solarite usually is because you don't need them to complete the mission or to get the achievements. However, in Wings of Liberty, you do need them because they're part of the objectives to complete the mission. So, or, well, the bonus objectives. 
and basically if you do not collect them you will not get the achievement for that mission. March towards my base. <laughs> Just a few stalkers and zealots, nothing to be worried about. Yes, if you want. To better help defend your base, whenever an attack comes to the base, select your spine crawlers and then have them deal damage to one unit at a time versus just kind of randomly splattering across. It helps with the DPS and taking out basic assaults faster. Get on your platforms, Dukov. <laughs> You'll want to use the infested Terrans or Marines as often as you can. Because they don't have that short of a life spawn or spawn rate. So it's easy to use them over and over again. The only ability you really want to wait on using is the the massive damage one, the concussive shot. Or corrosive shot, I should say. Also, keep your heal on cooldown when your army is near you, so. There's the hybrid. Take that one out real quick. Then focus this one down. And there you go. Now, I already had the achievement. So it didn't pop right there, but if you didn't have the achievement, it should have popped right there, so. And the achievement I'm talking about is basically destroying two hybrid within 20 seconds of each other, so. Which is not that hard, because these last three shrines usually send two or more hybrid at you, so. As long as you just focus them down, it, you can take them out pretty fast, back to back, so. using Archons, or the Shiny Dudes, because I can never remember their name. <laughs> and my favorite unit, the Void Ray. <laughs> I'm sorry, Void Rays are awesome. <laughs> you can have your carriers, you can have everything else. Actually, the, the what I used to do in multiplayer was basically a bunch of Void Rays and the Mothership. Because it's like, here's a crap ton of DPS that's flying and the mothership makes it to where you can't see it. <laughs> and again, if you if you are pretty good at macro, you can do what's called selective targeting, which is basically where you hold down shift, or you select all of your spine crawlers, hold down shift, right click on each individual unit, and it will basically make the spine crawlers attack those units in that order. I am. I think I'm finally going to try to take these Kerrigan levels, or at least this one. <laughs> the one that I've been staring at the whole game going, eh, okay. Since it's a pylon, you don't have to start off by destroying those guys. You can just straight up destroy the pylon and it takes out those guys. Now I'm just kind of looking around for it because basically I've got enough time to wait on the last shrine to, that I don't have to worry. So there's a shrine. That looks like a thing, but it's not a thing. 
this might be a thing over here, or it might be their base, but if it's their base, I'm going to take it out. <laughs> Yeah, I think I was being mean on this mission and just decided to completely wipe them off the map. <laughs> That's the good thing about using Ultralisks and high, uh, Swarm Queens, is basically you have a healer-tank combo, and then you just supplant it with Zergling, so you have a lot of DPS, so... It's really easy to just come in and mop up bases with that combination. And since I'm playing against Protoss, if I was a really good, basically, macro player, I would use Infestors, because a lot of the Protoss units are mechanical, and Infestors can take control of mechanical units. So basically, all the, like, Phoenixes and the Void Rays you're seeing, I would be able to basically snatch out of the air. I would be able to snatch the Colossi, anything that's a mechanical unit, like Immortals, so basically, half of the Protoss units, I would be able to just go mine. <laughs> like these Stalkers, I'd be able to take out the Void Ray and that Jet one. I can never remember what the Jet one's name is, because it's not a Phoenix, but it's not a Void Ray either, so... And as you can see, the Ultralisks just have a ton of health. They had, that one Ultralisk was taking on four Stalkers and one of the Jet Protoss and was able to just hold it with one Swarm Queen, so... For me, each faction has its ups and downs. I really love playing any of them. Mainly, I love playing the Protoss because they they feel like more of my playstyle, which is basically I love to have the beefy tanky units that can do a lot of damage. I blame it on my role playing games because basically when I'm playing games like Dungeons and Dragons or Skyrim, I like to be what's called a boom tank, which is basically where I'm wearing the the biggest heaviest armor I can find and then I'm casting the heaviest damage spells, usually AoE spells, so I can deal the most amount of splash damage and AoE damage I can. Ah, there's another one of those dark proton protest dark pylons. <laughs> Also, I, th I think one thing they could do if they were going to do a basically hybrid faction is kind of make it a mashup of the, whatchamacallit, the, of the three factions. Basically, they could make the hybrid building, the main facility, which it would be the Nexus or the Hive or the Command Center for their various factions, but make it a basically shrine or something to the hybrid, and instead of just producing Terrans or producing probes or something like that, it produces a random unit, which that random unit can basically do its functions for its respective fa uh, faction. And then basically instead of building something like, like the hive, or building something like the factory or Excuse me, or like the warp gates, you build a another mini uh, mini shrine, and that sh mini shrine basically will allow you to summon a random unit from one of the factions based on the building. Like if it's a mini shrine, it could summon either marines, zerglings, or basically zealots, or something along that line. And then basically what you could do is 
every time you summon something out of that building, it gives you a charge on that building, and once you hit, like, say, like, eight or ten charges, you get to summon a hybrid. Like, for your main facility, like, for your main nexus building or command center, you could summon the the aqua hybrids for every 25 basic, uh, whatchamacallit, or 25 uh, units you produce out of that building. Or, you know, you could summon, since it's the main, since it's your main facility, you could make it to where it summons the regular blue ones for every, like, 10 uh, probe slash production units you uh, supply out of that building. And then for the marine buildings, or the basic infantry buildings, you could have those produce, like, the gray hybrids you're seeing in this mission. And for, like, your big buildings, like your factories and your robox facility and stuff like that, you could have them produce, like, the the colossal black and red uh, hybrids for every, like, five or ten units you produce out of that building. I think that would be a good way to balance out the those units because it wouldn't make it to the point where you would just be producing overpowered hybrid but you could produce you know regular you know regular Terran or Zerg or Protoss units and then have your your hybrid as backup Here they're warping in Colossi. Yeah, see, if I was really good at macro, I would have basically been making infestors instead of swarm queens. And every time they summon like those Colossi or any of that stuff, just to use the infestor to take it and take the stalkers that are behind the hybrid over there. That would have been easy. Take the, you know, the Colossi. Take anything that the Pro Protoss produce, aside from like zealots you can take it with the infestors so that's what make that's kind of their strong suit against protoss the the protoss do have a strong suit against the zerg because the zerg have no flying units so they have no way of defending well they have flying units but they don't have a very strong air defense so they can be taken out of the air very quickly well guys we're approaching the end of the mission here. And there you go, guys. That's been Phantoms of the Void and how to get the achievements. If you like what you saw, give me a like and a share and a comment down below. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.